Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Charlie State and Naga Manchetti. Our headlines today. Good morning. It's Friday the 12th of June. Our top story today, the full impact of coronavirus on the economy will become clearer this morning when official figures from the first full month of lockdown are published at 7 o'clock. That's when GDP numbers for April are expected to show a record monthly drop in economic activity in the UK. Let's talk to Ben now. So that's just one snapshot of a business that is trying to adapt. Of course, at 7 o'clock, the GDP numbers will be coming out, and Ben's going to take us through all of that and look at the impact the um, coronavirus pandemic, of course, is having on this economy. Let's take you through the rest of today's main news now. 450 families who lost a relative to coronavirus are demanding an immediate public inquiry into how the government managed parts of the pandemic. Ministers insist the priority right now is to respond to the crisis. Michael Buchanan has been to meet the family of Tony Brown, who died in March. Well, in a statement, the government has said that at some point... Northern Ireland will become the first of the UK nations to reopen high street stores and shopping centres as coronavirus restrictions begin to ease today. There are plans for rigorous border checks after Brexit and they're expected to be relaxed as part of the measures to help businesses affected by the coronavirus pandemic. The UK had committed to introduce import controls on EU goods at the end of the transition period. That, of course, in January. Let's speak now to our... Barriers have been put up around a number of monuments in London, including the Cenotaph and statue of Winston Churchill, to try to protect them ahead of further planned anti-racism protests this weekend. Meanwhile, 24-hour security has been placed on a statue of Scouts founder Robert Baden-Powell. That's in Dorset until it can be safely taken down. Nick Big reports. And we're going to be talking to the Conservative MP for Bournemouth East, Tobias Elwood, and the Deputy Leader of the Council in Pool, just after 8.30 this morning. President Trump has said he will spend more money on training police forces across the country. His first policy proposal following a wave of anti-racism protests across the US. This comes after apologised for taking part in a controversial walk and photo shoot at a church with the president while demonstrations took place nearby. We can talk now to our correspondent. One of the most famous episodes of the 1970 sitcom Faulty Towers has been removed from a streaming service because it contains racial... Time now is 16 minutes past six. It's Friday morning. Let's have a look at your front pages. A uh, couple of things on the inside pages that might interest you. How do you feel about guinea pigs, Charlie? Well, I've never owned one uh, and I, I don't have anything against them, but I'm not over keen. Is that OK? Uh, is that my, that's my policy on... Uh, Why aren't you over keen on them? Just, uh, you know, just uh, uh, I'm not drawn particularly. I respect them, though. Oh, the, wo the world we live in, hey? <laughs> um, here's a picture. What, what is your, just for the, for the record, what's your policy on, uh, on uh, guinea pigs? I've never owned a guinea pig. I never wanted to own a guinea pig, mm. um, but I have nothing against guinea pigs. Is that it? That's it, is it? Uh, should I say I respect them? Yes. 19 minutes uh, past six, so let's pick up on another story. You know, uh, working the hours we do, and I know we're not unique in that, lots of mm. people eat at a certain time in the evening, makes feel better, eat late, can't sleep, all well, that kind I of thing. I think it's just you don't like going to bed full, do you? It doesn't feel very comfortable. Except on full. Christmas Day. Well, you... Well, I you said it, are you not you supposed to say it, are you, other than Christmas Day? Well, <laughs> you, <laughs> Christmas well you spend, Day. I spend about three days being... Halfway through the Christmas. year we are almost, aren't we? Talking about fridge stuff, um, Great Barrier Reef, yeah. Um, of course... Um, Great concern about the coral reef, um, is its destruction um, and how you can save it. If you were to look into your fridge, or a typical fridge, um, and to pick something out of the fridge that you think could help the Great Barrier Reef, what would it be? Yoghurt. Have you seen the story? Yeah, I saw the story. Oh, you told me you hadn't seen the story. Don't trust Charlie. Why is it yoghurt? Because he respects guinea pigs. Um, because... Don't go out throwing yoghurt over the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah, it kind of goes with your advice about respecting guinea pigs. <laughs> it's useful information on a Friday morning. There we go, now we know. 6.21 is the time. Uh, the story we are going to focus on, the whole of breakfast this morning, really, is um, the economy. Um, because just in, in just under an hour, we're going to get new figures from the first full month of lockdown. It's going to show us how the coronavirus crisis has impacted the UK's output, sales and, eventually, employment. In a bid to reduce some of the damage, the government is allowing non-essential retailers in England to reopen from Monday, of course. But the plan will only work if people are willing to risk a trip to the shops. Our consumer affairs correspondent, Sarah Corker, has this report. Interesting to see how retailers are coping. Uh, 25 minutes past six is the time. 
The rapper Stormzy has pledged £10 million to help tackle racial inequality in the UK. He said the UK continuously fails to admit that black people have been at a constant disadvantage in every aspect of life, with black men three times more likely to be arrested than white men. Our correspondent Ashley John Baptiste has been hearing some of their experiences. Not just issues of race there raised, it's very interesting hearing those people's experiences. 28 minutes past six is the time. Time is, uh, you just said that, 6.28. Uh, Matt, do you want to tell Matt. us the time? Uh, yeah, what time is it, Matt? You, can, uh, can, you can't hear it too often. Thanks very much, Matt. It's now 6.31 and 58 seconds. Lovely. 6.32 now. Back Good. to you. Glad we're all on that same page. We're all, we're all aware of what time it is for now. Good morning. This is Breakfast with Nagam Manchetti and Charlie State. Uh, we are going to bring you all the latest news in sports in a moment. Let's tell you what's happening. All that coming up a little later on. First, the summary of this morning's main news. The full impact of coronavirus on the economy will become clearer this morning when official figures from the first full month of lockdown are published at 7 o'clock. GD is 6.33. This is the time. Most mornings we have an appointment with our GP. And this morning it's Dr Rachel Ward who joins us from... I think I have a better bedside manner than you. You think? You think? She went away happy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're going to talk to Mike now. Uh, Mike, good morning to you. Obviously, morning. It, amateur golfers have been able to get out on the course in the last few weeks. Um, I'm very grateful for that. But mm. now, um, those fans of the sport who like watching it, they're going to get to see some kind of exhibition match, wouldn't you? Yeah, it, actually, well, I'll show you at 7.30. It's not that big. He runs up, takes his run up. Pole. <laughs> Yes, yeah, okay. he was competing okay. against an athlete in the stadium in Oslo at the same time. Well, pretty much the same time. Oh, looking forward to that at 7.30. Good. I'll be here. Wait your appetite, good. That's what Mike, thanks about. very much. We'll see you later on. 6.45 is the time now. Um, you'll know, you'll be experiencing this at home. Many of us are taking on extra responsibilities to help others during the pandemic. It's thought around four and a half million people across the UK have become unpaid carers because, as a result of this crisis. A Breakfast John McGuire has been speaking to two people who've dedicated their time in quarantine to taking over the care of their loved ones for the first time. You know, what I always appreciate, I mean, obviously this is an insight into lives and as we said, four and a half million people first-time carers are now because of the pandemic. But you've got Roxy and Julie, you've got Stephen and Emma, Emma Rose opening up their lives to us to show what they're going through. So thank you for that, because I think that would have touched and resonated with lots of people this Yeah, morning. and when you look at those, uh, I mean, uh, it's hesitate to use statistics in this case because mm. they're all stories, uh, they're family stories. For, what is it, over four million people now doing a role that they're willingly doing, you know, there's no, no attention to it, they're just doing it because it needs doing. For, more than four million people have adopted those roles under the current circumstances. So it will definitely resonate with many, many households. 6.50 the time now. Well, after being admitted to intensive care with coronavirus, Hugh Mullally feared that he wouldn't survive. When he was saying goodbye to his family, he told them about a song that they could remember him by. But after nine days in a coma, he made a recovery. Now his story is being featured in a special edition of Desert Island Dis on Radio 4. We're going to talk to Hugh in a few moments. First, listen to the track he chose. It's called Who Knows Where the Time Goes. It's by Sandy Denny. Thank you. What a lovely, what a lovely, I mean, he sounds like he's in such a good place now. Gentle, Recovery yeah. ongoing, but Reflective, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, trooping the colour, that's what we're talking about now. One of the biggest events in the royal calendar, of course, but this pandemic means tomorrow's ceremony, ceremony is going to be much smaller than usual. Brilliant pictures, but we're all adapting, aren't mm -hmm. we? All adapting. Uh, it's just coming up to 7 o'clock. We've got time to get some weather with Matt. That's not a nice picture. Good morning, you're watching Breakfast with Charlie State and Nagat Manchetti. Our headlines today. Good morning, it's Friday the 12th of June. Our top story this morning, official figures released in the last few minutes show the economy suffered its biggest in economic activity in April, which was the first full month of lockdown. It's um, Ben who's covering this this morning and taking a look. Ben, the... I know you're going to drill through the numbers um, further in a, in a few minutes. We'll let yeah, you get have back another to, look through those Get back to that and we'll talk shortly. Thanks. A group of 450 families who've lost relatives to coronavirus are demanding an immediate public inquiry into how the government managed parts of the pandemic. Plans for rigorous border checks after Brexit are expected to be relaxed as part of measures to help businesses affected by the coronavirus pandemic. The UK had committed to introduce import controls on EU goods at the end of the transition period in January. Well, let's talk to... 
Barriers have been put up around a number of monuments in London, including the Cenotaph and a statue of Winston Churchill, to try and protect them ahead of further planned anti-racism protests this weekend. Meanwhile, 24-hour security has been placed on a statue of the Scouts founder, Robert Baden-Powell, in Dorset until it can be safely taken down. Nick Beek has more. Let's get more from Sophia Seth. Now, one of the most famous episodes of the 1970s sitcom Faulty Towers has been removed from a streaming service because it contains racial sl Time now is 7.14 Friday morning. Let's go back to our main story this morning, the breaking news. The UK economy shrank by 20.4% in April. That, of course, is the first measurement in a full month of lockdown. Now, Ben has been going through the numbers. Hey, Ben, um, surely. Thanks very much, Ben. Speak to you later. Ben, thank you. So let's get a reaction from the Shadow Chancellor, Annalise Dodds, who joins us from... It's 26 minutes past seven. It's time to talk to Matt, find out what's happening. It's a very dramatic beach picture. Matt, thanks very much. Lovely story for you now. Um, school children and key workers are taking over the tannoys in train stations across England and Scotland from today. It's all about encouraging commuters to get about safely. It's hoped the messages will remind people to follow the new travel guidelines, which include wearing face coverings. Let's listen to some of the new announcers. We can talk to Lottie and Ted all the time in TV when we have to record our voices for reports and things like that. The editors make us do it over and over again, trying to get it perfect. Because my next question was, how many times did they make you do Part of the thinking as well is that you hear it, a different voice that'll make you pay attention a bit more. Maybe, you know, it, it, the normal structure is you hear a very formal, don't you? You hear a voice that sounds like normal voice and maybe... Teddy, I should ask, because the messages you say are that you're key workers and you want people to wear face coverings and wash hands because, obviously, those are the new rules now. Could learn something from them in terms of how many takes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> 7.34 um, is the time right now. So, the news we've had in the last half hour is the UK economy shrank by a record 20.4% in April. That's the first full calendar month of the coronavirus. We can talk now to the Health Minister, Ed. Time now is 7.45. That means it's time for us to have a chat with Mike about the sport. How things, Mike? Morning. Yes, good morning. Getting there was a there was a little a few issues there, but it was all safe. Yeah. And it, it must be off putting. It can't be the same as in the stadium. We've got all that space around you. You've got to be conscious of the, sh the sheds and not going over into the neighbours. How uh, many garden. times have you seen a professional pole vaulter go off the side? They don't do. They don't go. No, off they don't actually. To be fair, it does not happen. like me and you. I'd be in the neighbours' garden straight away, wouldn't I? Really? I wouldn't even get up on well, the actually, ball. I get up, Thanks for that. It's going to be the way. Pictures. Yeah, it's going to be the way going forward for him at the moment, at least. Yeah, as well, he's practicing. Just coming up to at least these seven fifty now, Mike. Thank you. Is he has he finished? Well, <laughs> oh, well apparently he is now. <laughs> you, you decided that, Charlie. Started my welcome once again. <laughs> Have you finished now? Oh yeah. Good. There we go. <laughs> 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 7.50 is the time, Mike. Thank you. Fashion weeks across the globe have been cancelled due to coronavirus, but London is to be the first city to launch its runway shows exclusively online. It's going to be a virtual event. It's going to showcase new designs as well as interactive videos and podcasts. Yeah, we're joined now by one of the organisers, Caroline Rush. Thinking, Caroline, I mean, you'll be aware this morning our main story is, a, is about... Uh, problems with the economy and this huge fall and that affects yeah. obviously retail is a big part of that and it uh, clearly must be a real concern for the fashion industry. Good morning. Thank you very much and Caroline thank you as well so uh, the new style London Fashion Week kicking off from today. Um, let's get the very fashionable Matthew to tell us what's going on with the weather. Uh Good morning welcome to Breakfast You're with Charlie State and Naga Manchetti. Our headlines today Good morning, it's Friday the 12th of June, our top story this morning. The UK economy shrank by 20.4% in April, the largest monthly drop on record. The figures are from the first full calendar month of the lockdown and show the impact that the coronavirus pandemic has had on economic activity. Let's talk to Ben, who's... Let's speak now to our political... 450 families who've lost a relative to coronavirus are demanding an immediate public inquiry into how the government managed parts of the pandemic. Ministers insist the priority right now is responding to the crisis. Michael Buchanan has been to meet the family of Tony Brown, who died in March. Now, scaffolding and boards have been put up around a number of monuments in London ahead of further planned anti-racism protests. Well, 24-hour security has been placed on a statue of Scouts founder Robert Baden-Powell in Dorset until it can be safely taken down. Let's find out. 
Well, we'll turn to our main story. So, just over an hour ago, we found out that the UK economy shrank by 20.4% in the month of April. Now, that is the largest monthly drop since records began in 1997. And, of course, they cover the first full calendar month of lockdown. In a bid to reduce some of the damage, the government is allowing non-essential retailers in England to open from Monday. But the plan will only work if people are willing to risk a trip to the shops. Here's more from our consumer affairs correspondent, Sarah Corker. Well, let's um, reflect on the figures that we had out this morning. We can talk to economists. 24 is the time now. So many of us have taken on extra responsibilities to help others during the pandemic. And it's thought around four and a half million people across the UK have become unpaid carers as a result of the crisis. Breakfast John Maguire has been to speak to two people who have dedicated their time in quarantine to taking over the care of their loved ones for the first time. A lot of smiles in that household, the, uh, the Muta family. And we thank, you know, both, both it's Roxy and Lily, wasn't it? Jilly. Uh, thank, sorry, Jilly. Yeah. Uh, thank them so much for sharing those stories, which so many people, for, what was it, four and a half million people, just taking on new, a new role that, you know, they're just doing it anyway. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it, we're also grateful for them telling us their stories because people get in touch here as well and just say, I know I'm not alone. Because they can see it on mm -hmm. the TV, they can see it on this programme. So it does matter, so thank you. Um, Matt has the weather for us. Matt, it was really windy yesterday, and I fear that we've got a bit of rain here in Salford today, have we? You have. In Thanks, Matt. Matt, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks very much. 8.30 is the time. You're watching Breakfast with Charlie State and Naga Manchetti. Our main story this morning, the UK economy shrank by a record 20.4% in April. That's the first full month of the coronavirus lockdown. The official protesters have drawn up a list of statues they want to see removed because of their links to slavery and racism. One statue is of Scouts founder Robert Baden-Powell, who's accused of racism, homophobia and support for the Nazis. The statue in Paul protection until it can be safely removed. Let's speak now to Tobias Hell. To you both. Uh, Mr Hal, first of all, we, we can see the uh, statue just behind you there. Um, just, just establish for us exactly what the situation is. I think the point you made um, about expunging historical figures which fail to match to 21st century values. Um, this statue, and I, I don't, I, I'm kind of asking you in general, but this statue in particular was, was I think, um, erected in 2008. Um, it was installed in 2008, so this century. Is there an argument in terms of when we look at these statues, when we look at the memorials that are up, that there is a balance to be made between when they were up, the, the time they represent, that these figures represent, if they are in um, stark contrast and offensive to, in comparison to today's value. Councillor Mark Howe talking to us from Paul Keith. Thank you very much both for joining us this morning. Time now is 8.39. How damaging can it be when wrong information is widely shared on social media? Well, that's Mohammed. Um, we're not using his second name because of the abuse he's um, received already on social media. Um, we can talk now to the BBC. Time's just coming up to 8.45. One of the most famous episodes of the 1970s sitcom Faulty Towers has been removed from a streaming service because it contains racial slurs. UK TV is owned by the BBC. Well, it's said that it's temporarily removed the Germans episode while it carries out this review. Let's find out more. 12 minutes to 9 is the time. Trooping the colour, one of the biggest events in the royal calendar. Coronavirus, though, means that tomorrow's ceremony is going to be much smaller than ones we've seen before. I'm not going to forget those pictures of those horses on the beach. I know, it's they beautiful. They were just so it? beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, it has been a week where many black authors have been calling for change in the British publishing industry. The UK's fiction and non fiction paperback charts have, for the very first time, been topped by a woman of colour. Bernadine Evaristo's Booker Prize winning novel, Girl, Woman, Other, is this week's best selling fictional paperback. We can talk to. Congratulations. Um, Thank what you. does this mean to you? So, you are the first British black woman to top the UK's fiction paperback chart. It's been a long time. Well, yeah, I'm. Um, in tandem with, with um, jointly awarded with Margaret Atwood. Um, that obviously always gives a boost to sales. But then. Think about the conversations that have been happening over the last few weeks, rightly so. Has that helped as well, do you think? Then your delight in it shines through, which is, which is lovely. So you describe it as, you know, a landmark moment, and there are a few of them that we're talking about more generally across the world. 
What happens? It's one of the uh, of a few books I've got on the go at the moment, and I'm um, I've got Yaz and Alma, who, who Alma, who are you know starting off as the characters you're first introduced. It's kind of um, ironic and timely, isn't it, that they are in an industry where they've fought their way up and kind of then been accused by people in their own communities of selling out. It's, it's almost like they're, they're dealing with that argument about where they fit and what is acceptable in... This is in the art scene, in the theatre theater industry. Hey, congratulations. Um, you yeah. are the first black British woman to top the UK's fiction paperback chart and your book is being read. So, And thank you for joining us. Uh, we will both be back with you from tom tomorrow morning from 6 o'clock. Until then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.